Jehan can hear me. Where are you from? Where are you from? We got uh, Lonella from Mexico, or Lonella. I couldn't read that. That was quick. Drew is here, our presenter is in the house. Barbara from Mexico, Oscar from Mexico. We've got Abdullah from Egypt, and Hakim from Yemen. We have from California, Sharon. Boy, it's going quickly. Irene from Russia. We have El Sadiq from Sudan. Marlene from Peru. Jehan from Yemen. Thanks so much for being with us tonight. We also have, uh, who else is that? Claudia from Argentina. More Argentina in the house. Saudi Arabia. I'm only reading where you're from because I can't catch the names. We've got Greece in the house. Pakistan is here. We've got something written in Arabic. Boy, how I wish I knew how to read Arabic. Okay. <laughs> oh, I hear someone. Someone else with me. Who is that? I heard someone's microphone on. That was me, man. How's it going? Oh, Drew, you're there. It's me. Where's, where's the video? Should I turn that? Should I turn? Yeah, man. Should I should I turn this up? I, my my internet connection is just too. Yeah, I know it's it's too slow. It's too. I can I can try to turn it on, but it it might just kick That's me okay. off. Because I I tech I tried the uh, like the system check or whatever. Unfortunately, I know I'd love to show my lovely face here in the morning over here. But can you hear me all right? Yeah. Let's see. Can everyone hear Drew? Did you hear someone's voice just now that was not mine? Okay. Great. Uh, Drew has a wonderful voice, but also a very lovely face, but there may be a problem because of his connection. Drew is in Japan. Which city are you in, Drew? Uh, I'm a little bit north of Nagasaki. Nagasaki, near Nagasaki. Yeah. And uh, I'm just going to introduce him a bit. Now, Drew, if you turn on the video, nothing happens? Is that what it is? Well, basically, like, I can, no, I can turn it on, but we'll, we'll see. Basically, I did a system check before we started. Uh -huh. Uh, a little while ago, and it, yeah, I can, I can, I can turn. <laughs> I see. All right. So, but, but we can hear you. Can we hear you? Are you there? Okay. okay yep. So I'm, I'm here. <laughs> All right. So, so uh, if if it improves, great. At least the voice is very clear, and I'll I'll stay on here uh, and talk to Drew, and we're gonna do this together. And the first thing I just wanted to tell you about Drew. Uh, oh, someone can see both of us. How does how does Claudia see us? Somehow you appear, Drew. So maybe you appear to some. Yeah, no, I, I, te I. You want me to leave? I'll leave the camera on, and if I get kicked out, then I'll just try to come back in, and I'll just turn the microphone. I'll, I'll turn the camera off. This is your show, so we want the cam. We want people to see you. I, uh, my internet, my internet service provider show. They let me. <laughs> Leave it on. You can hear us both. Some people can see you. Fantastic. I can't see you, but hey, I know what you look like already. If you don't already know Drew Badger, uh, I'm going to introduce him just a few things, and then Drew, kindly tell us more about who you are and what you do. Uh, I met Drew. Radio. Okay. I, I met Drew, I don't know, maybe a year ago, something like this, when I found his videos on YouTube. They are excellent. He does a lot of different types of videos. What they all have in common, I feel, is a really great uh, relationship. He builds a very relaxed uh, relationship he builds with the viewers. And the attention he pays to high frequency vocabulary, the most functional uh, structures in English, and how to, and this is what he'll focus on tonight, how to build fluency through a lot of psycholinguistics, uh, information to know about how we uh, acquire language and process language, some things you may not have thought about before. Uh, so it's it's great when someone with that kind of deep thinking about language is also a very down to earth and very funny guy, makes funny videos too, lighthearted videos. So it's a pleasure to have him here. And Drew, can you tell us anything else uh, and, and how what we're going to do today? Yeah, certainly. Uh, so first of all, again, uh, people are kind of coming in a little bit later than when we started. So if my video feed cuts off, it's not because I don't love you or don't want to show my pretty face. Uh, it's just because I use way too much internet over here and my telling uh, me this word to throttle just means I'm using the internet too much. So they're they're cutting my usage down. I'm uploading too many things to YouTube and downloading stuff. 
Uh, so anyway, can I talk at this speed? Is it coming through clear enough? Can I just get some like hellos or thumbs up or anything? Or yeah, it's great. All right, beautiful. Um, so first of all, I wanted to say thank you so much to Jace uh, and to everyone else. I wish I was more awake. I could do some more rapping with him. Uh, Jace and I, we both have <laughs> we both have uh, a similar kind of history. I imagine we. Um, I don't know. I, I, we we have kind of a kinship, I guess you could say. We're both uh, we love rap and hip hop, and we grew up in that. Uh, Jay, did you go to like a, a mostly? Uh, what kind of high school did you go to, or elementary school, even, if I may ask? Yeah, I went to a, a, a middle school and a high school that was mainly Black American students. And if if you yeah. were so, if you wanted to fit in, if you wanted to be one of the cool kids at the school, and you were a white kid, you definitely had to conform to the styles. <laughs> You know, music, clothing, everything that was happening uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, with, with, the, with the cool students there, for sure. Yeah, so I mean, basically, I'm coming from the exact same situation. So, Jason, you're from New York, New Jersey. I'm from Chicago. Uh, and, and as Jason said, I've been out here in Japan. What? Oh, you're from, you're from St. Louis. We're both Midwest, baby. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Right from the Midwest. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Fantastic. Well, it's great that we can communicate here, you know, no matter where we are in the world through video. I can even eat, you know, some garlic toast for breakfast and no one will care because you can't smell it, you know. <laughs> but I'm excited to be here and, and really thrilled to be able to teach. And hopefully uh, the, um, the video keeps on going over here. All right. So first, a few questions. Uh, wait, does anybody have any questions before we get started? I can see you know, like a couple of people typing things over here, really going by very quickly. I noticed one person asked about my hair. Yes, my hair is getting longer. I want to grow it out before I go bald. You know, basically, I want to have some fun with it. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm kind of losing it a little bit. Yeah, you know, before I, before I get all Jason, uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But, you know, maybe, maybe, we can, uh, maybe we can do something else. So most of the time, uh, for most of my life, in fact, I've had short hair. But I just decided, well, I might as well grow it out. And, you know, if my wife doesn't get too angry, then it should be okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, well, en enough about this. Basically, a quick overview of what we'll get into today. Uh, the first thing is just, again, like, welcome to... Uh, basically, I'll go over a little bit about myself and then the pre-class assignment. And then I've prepared a fantastic video for everyone. And I prepared the video just in case... Uh, my internet connection is not very good, so I look forward to, um, you know, being able to see this. If some people may have seen the video already. If not, uh, you're in for a real treat. I work very hard on this, and I think it's really something special uh, mm -hmm. for you and for your students as well. Um, so and then also, if you have any... Or do you want to? Or do you want no, to no, no, no. I'm going to do. I'm going to do a little bit of warm up, uh, and we'll talk about some things, and then we'll get into the video. I'll give you the signal when we're ready to rock with the video. Okay. All right. Uh, and then the last thing is we'll have a few questions that are related to the video or about my hair or anything else most <laughs> people want to talk about. It's just up to you guys. All right. Well, if we've got no questions, <laughs> uh, let's get ready to roll here. So the first thing I'd like to know, uh, I know there's a wide assortment of people. What? Drew, I just wanted to, to say, ask one thing. So uh, there was a lot of yeah. activity today uh, um, on your yeah. class um, discussion, the pre-assignment yeah. questions. Did you want to talk about that before or after the video? Yeah. W which is better for you? We'll talk about that before. Before. I'm, I'm, we'll, we'll get to that in just a moment. I'm getting there. Yep. Yeah. So j just sit back and enjoy. You can relax. I know Jason is working so hard over there. You're up maybe 28 hours a day doing stuff. So just take a moment, sit back, have a popsicle or something, you know, relax yourself. Uh, and I'll, I'll take it for a little bit. But you can come back in in a moment. So anyway, first, uh, if I can just get a... Uh, a just a response from everyone with just one letter on uh, in the comment section let me know if you are a teacher or a student if you are a teacher just put T and if you are a student put S I want to know what the mix is here oh wow there are a lot of teachers here all right beautiful <laughs> and a few students I see we should it should be all teachers but yeah it should be it should be all teachers but I'm sure we'll get a few people in here uh, that maybe aren't Possibly. learners things anyway but anyway it's great to see there's a lot of teachers out here I'm really excited to help other teachers 
um, I know I can bring a lot to other teachers and I'm excited to do that. Uh, so also, if, does anybody know who I am, first of all? You can just give me a yes or a no if you've seen my videos or anything prior to, uh, prior to this WizIQ presentation. No, no, yes, no, yes, yes, no, no, yes, 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 yes. You look like a video guy, yes, yes, and okay, all right, very good, very good. All right, well, let's get started. So about me, very quickly, as Jason said, I came to Japan in uh, 2003, so I've been here on and off for about 10 years. Uh, I came to Japan to study Japanese gardening, and so that's kind of what I do in my free time. Uh, I have a couple of uh, like bonsai; these are little little Japanese trees that you keep in pots, uh, and I do some other gardening out here as well. But in order to come to Japan, I had to teach English, so it was one of those things that I kind of I didn't really fall into it, but you know I was I was actually excited to teach because I really enjoy teaching, but I didn't know so much about teaching English itself, so I had to kind of learn how to do that. Uh, in addition to learning the gardening stuff that I came out here to do. Um, and one thing myself in general is that I was, you know, before anyway, a, a really bad language learner. Uh, I think that's something that I think a lot about still as I try to teach lessons because I remember how frustrating it was when I was learning languages and trying to figure things out uh, and it just felt like I was the stupid one. So you kind of assume the teacher knows what they're talking about, uh, and you know if you don't understand that thing, then you're kind of the the bad one. You you should be understanding things like that. But I realize that you know I want to learn languages, and I seem to be a pretty good English speaker, so I can learn at least one language. Um, but learning another language is you know it's kind of a different a different kind of skill, and it's it's not something so easy as you know learning how to walk to a store or doing some other simple task it takes a lot of time and practice and energy uh, and so it's something I really wanted to learn how to do so as I became a teacher um, I, I really wanted to think more about that and as I became you know better at teaching I was also becoming much better at learning languages uh, and I think one of the the interesting things about being able to teach here uh, is of the students and you know talk a little bit more especially with this video about how I like to learn and how it makes it a bit easier for me to teach I hope I'm not explaining too much uh, but the general idea over here is I'm just not very good at traditional language learning techniques uh, learning grammar drills and exercises like that it just doesn't work for me and there are some people that it works really well for uh, but hopefully with this presentation I'll be able to change the world just a little bit uh, in my own special way of uh, improving people's you know, ability to learn and ability to teach as well. All right, so let's get into the pre-class assignment, the pre-class assignment. First of all, what was the pre-class assignment? Does anybody anybody remember? Anybody want to type that in? What was the, uh, uh, the pre-class assignment? Yes, what? No, you don't have to tell me the question. I want to know the answer. What was the answer? Watch five videos plus what? We had to watch five videos. Yes, what were the five videos about? Vocabulary, beginning, assess the pupils, teach about vocabulary. What was the other part of the pre-class assignment? So we had watching some videos, but also what was the other thing I asked you to do? Yes, very good. So we have a question to help students master new vocabulary. We need what? What do we need to do for that? So I know people already answered. As Jason said, there were a lot of great responses on the, um, uh, I guess, the, what do you call that? The course feed or the course where or one, one of those class, things? Class, <laughs> and by class the way, page. Drew, okay, the class page. Drew, Drew yep. my friend. By the way, when you see the big green and weekly English workouts, that's me and everybody else. Oh, that's you. <laughs> yeah, that's what oh, I'm Oh, okay. I'm trying to, to – it's like – That's me. Oh. <laughs> Jason, so, he's so nice. I can't believe how much energy you still have over here for doing this, and even it's only week two. <laughs> anyway, well, basically, yes, we did some color coding as well. Hello to you, Sylvia. It's great to see you over here. So basically, I'm sorry if you can hear, there's, uh, there's a lot going on where I live. Even though this is a small town, we've got cicadas out, which are crazy loud, so I've got my – windows closed and you can still maybe kind of hear them there's a siren going off too and 
I live by a train station. So Jesus. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yes, the point of the previous, uh, the pre-class video assignment, I really wanted to see what your responses were, and I think they were rather telling about how kind of English education and teachers are in general. And this isn't necessarily a good or a bad thing. I think a lot of people learn languages a certain kind of way, and then they also teach languages a certain kind of way. So uh, getting a little bit deeper with the pre-class assignment, what... Um, what did you notice if, if you went back and looked at all of the answers on the class page or even if you're noticing them here, what do you notice about people's responses? There are two things that really jumped out at me, but I want to know what people noticed about those. What, what did you notice that was similar or different? Anything you can just uh, go ahead and, you know, you can write so, something visual. Teacher needs to be enthusiastic, use creative tools, tool practice, practice vocabulary. So what was what was similar about everyone's response? Almost everyone's response. Real patient activities. Teach vocabulary and context to make students in charge. Creativity, repetition, passion to teach. All right, very good. You can stop and relax. I know everyone is typing feverishly on the computer. I don't want to make you work so hard in this lesson. Uh, so the first thing that I noticed about those is it. When I teach my regular students, and this isn't just for like my uh, Master English Conversation members or for anybody else that watches um, my English Anyone videos, uh, a lot of the people that are either learning or teaching are, are kind of worried a lot more about tactics. And tactics is kind of the specific tools that you use. Um, so an example here would be, well, we have to teach vocabulary in a certain way. Uh, we have to use this kind of textbook, or we have to use a song, or we have to do this or that. And again, all of these things aren't either good or bad, it's just different ways of teaching. But what I really want people to focus on more is strategy, and that's what I'll talk about here. So again, tactics, this is more kind of individual ways that you can teach something. It depends on what you're teaching, but again, songs and games and other things like that. But the actual strategies, uh, it's a lot more about how you teach more, more than kind of what you teach or the specific ways that you're doing that. Uh, so we'll, uh, thank you very much, focus on strategy more than tactics, I appreciate that. Uh, so the other thing I noticed here, let me see what I've got here, I've got some, uh, some good notes here. Uh, Ah, okay, so the, the other one, yes, it's kind of connected with that is there are a lot of different ways to teach. So I know um, a lot of teachers, they have kind of their own specific way of teaching, and just like I do, I kind of teach in my own way and find students that enjoy learning in that way. Uh, so Jace, you know, he has his thing. He likes the rap and the music and getting people really, like, psyched and excited, and, and he's really like that in real life. It's not just the videos. It's great to see him always excited when I get mails from him. Um, so all of these things, again, they're not necessarily good or bad, it's just kind of, I really want in this video for people to, when you're watching the video that we present here, to think more about strategy for learning and how you think as a teacher, as opposed to the actual tactics that you're using. Uh, so if you have any questions about that so far, again, like, it's, I, I'm not, I, I know I have a reputation for not liking textbooks, it's not really, it's not really my thing, I want to kind of clear that up. Uh, basically, it's not, again, a textbook is just a tool, and depending on what it is you're trying to learn, a textbook necessarily isn't, isn't like an evil thing, uh, but again, if you want to go into outer space, maybe a car isn't the best way to do it. So there's kind of different tools that you can use, uh, and there are also many different ways that you can think about doing something. So the video will be coming up very soon. Um, So uh, the last thing before we play the actual video here, uh, I just want to say again one last point about this. This is kind of the same way I teach my students, and I know you only saw a few uh, those five beginning uh, beginning English grammar videos. If you watched anything else on my channel, I highly recommend watching uh, the series on how to get fluent in English faster. It's a whole video series. You can find the playlist on my YouTube channel. 
Uh, it's got, I think, over 30 some odd videos right now. Uh, and there really are some, some great tips in there, not only for, for students for learning, but also for teachers. And a lot of it, as Jason mentioned before, goes into uh, the strategy of how to learn and specific ways of learning about psychology as a student and also as a teacher. All right. So with that kind of background, I want you to keep those things in mind, not tactics, but strategy. Again, strategy is really what you want to be focusing on first. If you can master the fundamentals of teaching or the fundamentals of learning, then everything else becomes much easier after that. So why don't we queue up the video? The video is about uh, maybe 10 or 11 minutes long. It's not too long, but I hope you enjoy it. Uh, if you have questions for me while the video is happening, then you can type them. I'll be watching uh, the chat box over here, and we can see if anybody has any questions or anything uh, while we're while we're going through the video. Uh, then I'll I'll look at those, and we'll be able to talk about them after the video is finished. So keep an open mind, uh, sit back, and enjoy the video, and let's let's cue it up. Uh, I just sent a message to uh, I think it's um, we have a different support team here. Uh, let me from WizIQ. So okay. I sent a message saying to 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 play the video. Uh, let me just okay. give one second. Uh, I believe it's it's uh, not Raman. at all. Take your time. Raman who is here. Okay, yes. Raman, hello. <laughs> Raman is going to uh, play the video in a moment. <laughs> what there are a few a couple questions I saw. One one that Dr. Nelly asked, which I think is interesting. You yep. said you uh, you said you were not a good English. Uh, sorry, uh, language learner. How did you learn Japanese? Yep. Did you become? Did you? What did you realize? How did I learn? We'll wait on uh, that. So let's basically, I began. Oh, let's watch the video. Okay, we'll we'll come we'll come back we'll, we'll come back to that. Okay. Thank you for joining teachers all over the world on this historic course. I'm Drew Badger, author, English speaking confidence expert, and co-founder of EnglishAnyone.com, and it's a pleasure to welcome you to Language and Logic. The Secret to Natural Vocabulary Learning. Before we get into the meat of this session, I want to begin with a one-question quiz. I'll give you a few seconds to look it over, and then we'll return to examine it more closely later. Here we go. X plus Y equals Z. What is Y? I always begin language lessons in a special frame of mind. I imagine I'm on some far-off planet and am teaching English to aliens. I know nothing of the students' alien language, and they know nothing of mine. This means I can't directly translate English words into their language, or use their language to explain how things like grammar rules work. It also means I must make lessons as simple and intuitive as possible, so students absorb things automatically. No matter what planet you live on, there are always basic rules of logic. A equals A. If P, then Q. If Q, then R. Therefore, if P, then R. Logic comes in many flavors but I'll cover three of the most important for helping your aliens learn vocabulary as naturally as native speakers do. The most elementary tool in your bag of logical tricks is contrast. Even without any previous knowledge or additional information, you can understand something by comparing and contrasting it with something else. Shadow reveals light. Through pain, we understand pleasure. Let's use a concrete example and see if you can learn a few new words from some alien language. Resox. I'm giving you just one word and an image of a single object. This seems obvious enough to me because I know what I mean, but is it really intuitive? Logically, resox could mean apple, red, round, shiny, small, or any number of other things. Granted, context is important when teaching, and we'll get to that shortly, but I just want to make this point especially clear so you understand the minds of learners analyzing what you might think to be unmistakable. Here's the object again with a bit of contrast. Resox Haitha, Penap Haitha. 
Now we're cooking. By introducing contrast, the brain has something to work with. The images are identical except for a single, glaringly obvious difference. Looking back at the alien language, we can safely guess that the different words refer to the colors of the objects. It's also reasonable to assume that adjectives come before nouns in this language. It's amazing how much we can figure out all on our own when we're shown things in the right way. Just to be sure we understand, our benevolent alien teachers have given us an additional set of contrasting images to help us get our target word. Penap Hatha, Penap Word. If you didn't guess it already, Penap means green and Resox means red. What we mean or want others to understand often isn't what gets transmitted. This happens frequently in everything from text messages to conversations between native speakers. So we have to be especially vigilant that we communicate as best as possible unmistakable messages. As students build a foundation of basic knowledge, they can begin using context to evaluate more complex information. Here's a quick story about how I was able to use context to teach myself some Korean, even though I know absolutely nothing about the language. I was visiting a friend of mine in Fukuoka, Japan recently, and we decided to go to a popular Korean restaurant. When I was left alone because my friend had to take care of his son, I noticed a poster of the actor Will Smith and his son Jaden on a wall near our table. The poster appeared to be for an upcoming movie, so I had the context figured out. I also guessed that since the actors share the same last name, I should find identical translations of the name Smith near each other on the poster. And that's exactly what happened. The coolest part of the discovery was that the characters for the name Smith appeared to be phonetic. If you look at the translated name, the character I took to mean Sue is repeated twice. Translating it back to English, we should get something like Sumisu. The same Sue character also appears in the title of the movie, which I later learned is called After Earth. When learners understand the context of an idea or message, and it's presented in a logical way, students will take care of the rest and enjoy doing it. The last form of logic we'll examine is analogy, a close cousin of basic comparison. If you can connect what you're trying to teach with something learners already understand, there's a better chance that information will be absorbed. To use a simple analogy here, language learning can be like code breaking. Like the translation puzzle here, your goal should be to create a situation where students have everything they need to literally teach themselves. Okay, since you may be wondering why I'm explaining what seems pretty self-evident, let's return to the math problem from the beginning of this session. x plus y equals z. What is why? The answer, in short, is anything. And that's the problem. There's no anchor, compass, or star to direct you towards one obvious conclusion because the answer depends on the numbers you use. In the world of language learning, this exact problem is often thrust upon unwary students and with devastating consequences. Open virtually any beginning English textbook or watch the first lesson of almost any English video course, and you'll most likely find something like this. My name is Tom. What's your name? This English may seem simple to teachers, but it's actually a recipe for pain. Even if students understand the context that greetings are being taught, there is absolutely no way to understand the grammar or words intuitively. These two sentences introduce the phonetic rules of English, possessive determiners, verb conjugation, identity, grammar, new vocabulary, sentence structure for statements and questions, and contractions. In some alien language, these sentences might look something like this. 
Because students can't possibly understand these sentences automatically, we resort to translations and explanations in lessons. And then we wonder why so many learners can't express themselves without having to translate things in their heads before they speak. The subtitle of this session is The Secret to Natural Vocabulary Learning. I used learning because our job is to help students teach themselves. We're really just facilitators. We painstakingly set up the dominoes so that all students have to do is knock them down with one effortless push. When learning happens in this way, students' own knowledge feel great about their progress and become excited to learn more. Before we move on to teaching vocabulary and slang, please keep the following three points in mind. One, what we consider to be simple and intuitive might not be to someone else. 2. A successful lesson should give students direct access to new information. Mental steps of translation and explanation should be limited or eliminated completely. 3. Education is the process of revealing a path to knowledge students can navigate by themselves. Ultimately, the secret to helping students learn any kind of vocabulary, phrase, or grammar lies in your frame of mind, and not with any specific technique. As long as you remain empathic and strive to keep things as intuitive as possible, the introduction of new vocabulary is really quite simple. Lessons for beginners should be tightly constrained so that understanding can be reached automatically with basic logic. Experienced learners can call upon previous knowledge and context, but lessons should still highlight new information in an intuitively understandable way. As an example, I often teach slang and idioms by juxtaposing native English sentences with what students might find in a textbook. Notice how I'm teaching something intermediate, but still using the basic principle of contrast. I went to a pizza restaurant after school. I hit up a pizza restaurant after school. In this way, students understand the basic meaning of hit up by contrasting it with went to. They also learn to think of the whole phrasal verb as one seamless unit and understand how it can be used in the wild. Going deeper, I'll change the tense of the sentence so students can see if and how the expression changes. I hit up a pizza restaurant after school. I'm hitting up a pizza restaurant after school. I'll hit up a pizza restaurant after school. With each iteration, I'm still changing only a small piece of the sentence. This answers potential questions about usage in different situations and helps students feel comfortable using the new word or phrase as quickly as possible. Once students understand hit up, I can use it to introduce even more new words. Remember to think of your students as aliens, and you'll help them become stronger and much more confident English speakers. I hope you enjoyed this presentation, and I'll see you in the comments. Wonderful. Great. Yeah, it's a great video. It really encapsulates uh, what I love about Drew and how he connects with learners. As you can probably imagine, I hope you can imagine, this video was made for teachers. He doesn't try to teach English this way. His videos for students have this wonderful, uh, relaxed, mellow quality like this one, which I think uh, is a, a huge uh, part of his success with getting students to be fluent is how relaxing his videos are and how passionate he is about uh, getting getting their motivation up and their confidence up to build vocabulary but also lots of other things but i'm happy he's focusing on vocabulary here of course because that's our topic of focus for our course and uh, if you couldn't hear uh, the video uh, or see the video or you have a problem because YouTube is blocked. Um, we have the creator of the video here and he's a presenter in our course. So he, we will definitely get that to you. And uh, English Anyone uh, YouTube channel has lots and lots of great videos uh, for students, which you can use as teachers with your students 
um, and I, I'm sure they they will love them. Drew, are you are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Actually, I can I I'll put this live right now. It's still not public on the channel, but I see people are passing out the link. It's not a private video. Uh, I'll make it public after this presentation is over. Uh, also, if um, if you'd like, I can upload it to WizIQ and people can download it from there if they'd like to do that. I don't know how that happens, but it's certainly something I can. I'm happy to do that. So. Yeah, I'll have to put that up. But for now, if just make the link public. We'll make sure in the next day or something that that we get the actual uh, video file uh, in some form that people could could have it. That's great. Yeah, Drew Drew made this video just for us for this presentation. So thanks so much, Drew, for. Taking the time and, and yeah, certainly do that. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure there are going to be questions uh, right now. And Drew, am I right? You you wanted to keep this last half of the class for questions. Well, ba yeah, ba so basically, um, I mean, there's a few things we can talk about, but since we've only got about 20 minutes left, uh, I'd rather answer some questions from students. I, you know, I kind of keep it how, how the learners here want to do it, so I don't necessarily need to go over anything, uh, but just more if, if people have questions. I can answer um, Dr. Nelly's question if you'd like yeah, me to begin with that, and one. if anybody has and, and any what more. what I do is, can I just make an announcement? Um, yeah. I, I want to, while Drew's answering questions, if you could type your questions in, everyone, I'm going to jot down s certain ones that I think would be good uh, to do here. And then all the questions that you want to ask, we are going to have, um, and this is important, everyone, please listen, two places to do this in WizIQ on the class page where we've already started uh, the discussion with the pre-assignment questions. And also, thanks to Sylvia Sylvia, uh, who's here, she set up Facebook group for uh, Drew. So Drew, you may not know that yet, but there's a Facebook group for this class, uh, just like we set up earlier for uh, Charles, uh, who had a presentation. Oh, that's on that's on Facebook. Yeah. So two places. Now the reason we're not doing Facebook gotcha. only is because some people don't like Facebook or can't get Facebook, etc. <laughs> uh, so we don't want to say, and you know, we will the link. Yeah, the Facebook group. Uh, Angela's asking. It is not uh, officially up, or it's up actually, but we haven't shared the link. So after that, um, you'll you'll click to join. And if you haven't seen the one for Charles's class today, it's there. You don't need to go to that page, however, for any of the assignments. Okay, so this is a page, a group for discussion afterwards, and this would be a great place, Drew, for you to go to meet the students uh, in yeah. the chats, and also on your class page, you'll want to check that. But for right now, uh, for some live Q&A, uh, while you're answering Dr. Nelly's question, uh, I will look at the chat box, everyone. Feel free to put your questions in now, and we'll ask through some questions uh, before the end of uh, the uh, session. And one thing someone said, is there a PowerPoint? No, there is not a PowerPoint for this one. The idea is this video, uh, your, the idea is from the pre-assignment, and then now if you have questions for Drew, and he'll be happy to answer them. So go ahead with Nelly's question. Do you remember Dr. Nelly's question about Japanese? Yes, I do. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so basically, I when I came to Japan, uh, I was all excited, and some of my students know this story already, but I was super excited to come out here. I finally made it. I wanted to come to Japan for a really long time, and then I got here, and I couldn't speak. I didn't really know any Japanese at all. I had learned a few written characters, but... Uh, as most of you know, as being language learners or teachers, when you try to start speaking a language, it's it's just a whole different ball game. What you learn in a textbook is not what you're learning uh, or what's spoken on the streets. And even if the same words are used, the pronunciation is different. There's certain dialects, especially in a small town where I'm living. There's like old people that I, I still have trouble understanding what they're saying. Uh, so uh, to answer Dr. Nelly's question, basically what I did is stop learning the traditional way. Uh, I had a whole bunch of textbooks when I came here and I would go through them but it didn't work. Uh, so what I started to do is realize that the, and especially for me as a learner, um, I can kind of understand something logically using a grammar book just like I was teaching here but as far as remembering it and then being able to put that into my active vocabulary, um, I started taking kind of small trips around my neighborhood at first and practicing just one specific phrase at a time. 
because again a lot of the information that's available and there's so much information out there but still I'm guessing probably the same percentage of students are having having a lot of problems actually speaking confidently so that's really where I was stuck uh, and and there's so many students again they there are a lot of learners that I teach that actually know more about grammar than I do and like I'm not necessarily embarrassed by that it's just a different kind of skill I'm really not good at remembering like okay what's the second conditional give me an example of this and like I probably couldn't do that very well uh, so I actually have to think uh, anyway so I, I yeah I, I think most I think don't don't we agree most learners are, are, are like that and if they if they don't realize it themselves they think oh I just must not be good at learning a language yeah and that's exactly what what happened to me and I, I I messed up you know learning French back in high school and Spanish in college and so when I came to Japan like I was I was really passionate about wanting to learn but I had I just had no idea so the first thing I did as I said uh, I made kind of speaking missions for myself uh, and basically the first thing I did is I went to a local grocery store and I said like where is the sugar where is the salt where is this and even if I knew where something was I just walked around talking to every every person that worked I didn't care if they were a cashier or if they were you know doing whatever basically I walked around I had one specific question that I would ask where is the sugar and I would just change maybe one word and I built I built my speaking confidence that way uh, in that situation basically you can't really uh, well, I guess you don't have to worry so much about them getting you into a conversation because they're all busy and working so it's a really great way to go out and practice without worrying about them asking you about philosophy or you know what what's happening with the government or anything like that that you don't already know so you can kind of appear to be a great speaker by just asking one thing and then they show you where it is and then you just say thank you very much and then find something else you need and go find somebody else uh, so that was one part of the way that I got better it was small speaking missions and this is part of what I do in my program called master English conversation I think maybe we have a few members here um, but basically at the end of the program I have a speaking mission for people that they can do every month and so it's a different way of then just instead of learning the basic grammar or vocabulary you actually have a way of using it so this month actually I have a brand new lesson set that will be coming out uh, on the 10th so this Saturday I teach students how to improve their English fluency with something they can hold in the palm of their hand. So I'm really excited about that. It's really interesting that everybody can do. Uh, and then the other part of that building fluency is that I found something that I was really excited about that wasn't just necessarily conversation and that was the gardening. So I met my gardening teacher uh, and he didn't know any English and I didn't know any Japanese but because we can manipulate a rock or a plant or something I can slowly start building the language and asking questions that way so small speaking missions to build your confidence uh, and then having something that you're excited about and passionate about in order to get out and, and really get fluent so basically that's how I teach now uh, sorry if that took a long time but if there's other um, other questions people have Jace if you're you're looking at other things over there I'm, I'm happy to answer those as well uh, some of it's going by too quickly um, and uh, but I have enough <laughs> now and remember afterwards Facebook uh, group and Sylvia has the link. Maybe Sylvia, you can put in the link again for the Facebook group, but we will post that and I will send an announcement that goes to all 2,300 students with the Facebook link. Uh, here are a few questions. First one, uh, several people asked, you have the three points, contrast, something, and analogy. And uh, people couldn't, weren't sure about the second yeah. one. Could you talk about that a little bit? Context. Context. Okay. I sure. Okay. So basically, uh, there's con contrast. So so con contra contrast. I know it's a little bit of uh, <laughs> uh, messing messing with the sounds there, but basically you've got contrast, and the difference between contrast and context is that contrast doesn't require any outside information. Up as I did, like the two apples that are basically identical with one glaringly obvious difference. Uh, and without any outside information, you know what that means. And so that's basic contrast. And that's basically how you can begin teaching English learners or even using more advanced techniques. And in the homework assignment that I've given for people, this is the post-class assignment, 
Uh, I have a link to another video that I teach. This is actually a master English conversation lesson video, and you can see how I use contrast to teach more complex grammar. So it's not just for beginners. Um, but then context, again, is taking information that people already know and using that to connect you know, something new that they're learning. So in the example of the poster that I saw, this was like a month ago, I was in Fukuoka and I saw that and it just happened to be a good example for this lesson. Uh, but I saw that poster and I already knew it was a movie poster. So that was the context of that. I was taking previous information and using that to learn something new. So as people teach and as people learn, basically you're taking a whole bunch of basic pieces of knowledge and then learning how to synthesize them or combine them or deconstruct them in order to make something more complicated. And then with each kind of level of the building you're producing, the foundation up through the stories of knowledge, then you can use a lot more previous information. But I the the whole thing I got into at the end about context and and my name is Tom, what's your name is because most people and this is you know it's kind of in the textbook and again it happens to do with the kind of teachers uh, and, and it's it's not people doing anything you know bad for students it's just having kind of a, a lack of empathy and and the empathy is really what I want people to take away from this video so it's not you know specifically a, a kind of song or a dance or any other particular tactic that you need to use as a teacher because all of them are effective and you know some of them are good for some learners and some of them are good for not so I, I want people to not get so hung up on a particular you know way that you should teach uh, but remembering that this this notion of empathy that if people really have no idea what you're talking about we kind of assume that people have seen movies and you know they know what's your name so we just kind of teach it like that but if you ask a lot of students like I'll, I'll talk to you know students out here in Japan they learn what's your name as kind of one thing what's your name what's your name what's your name but then they don't understand what's his name and the reason they don't understand what's his name is because they haven't learned the pieces of that and how to break it down um, and then how to you know how to kind of deconstruct a language because it's, it's already too complicated um, so if you begin with basic contrast, then you can move on to context that you've built from contrast. And you know, most of the time we're teaching something and it's it's easy to understand for the teacher, but it's just not easy to understand for the learner. And the problem is that they think uh, as learners that if they say they don't understand that they look stupid. And again, this is the same problem I had and maybe you had and a whole bunch of other people are dealing with the same thing. Drew, I'm going to stop you just because there's some really great questions coming in, uh, but I, I appreciate okay. that about the contrast, context, and analogy. Uh, one common uh, thread here in, in these questions here relates to teaching uh, more advanced learners, teaching older learners, and a problem that arises so often uh, with more advanced and older learners, especially in you know, public school situations, you know, ministries of education, so forth, yeah. where there's a curriculum that they have to follow, and uh, Hussan and some others are saying, you know, what do we do when we have students who really are not motivated, who feel like they just have to learn English because it's in the curriculum that, you know, they're not, there's not English outside in their daily lives. So we sometimes forget because we live at a time where there is so much more access to English and videos and songs and more motivation for some students, but not for everyone. Uh, and so you have a lot of stuff uh, for different levels, but I think the feeling some people have here from what they've seen, and it's true, you do have a lot of stuff for beginners. So could you talk a moment about how your your your, your approach and, and also maybe about materials you have that could be good for advanced learners and older learners, and also any kind of advice you'd have for getting students more motivated uh, in those situations where they often aren't? Sure. Okay. So the first thing about motivation, um, I think it, it's it's kind of a tricky question because I, I, like people kind of try doing something and then if they aren't able to do it successfully quickly, then they decide that they don't like it. So I think the the motivation aspect it's a lot more about how easy something is for people to do. And the reason I gave my basic examples here is not because it's only for beginning learners, but basically these are the principles of education and the way that we can express information and convey information without, you know, people being confused about things. 
And when people are not motivated to do something, it's usually because it's, you know, and, and even this happens to me too, it's the teacher's fault. And I, I take full responsibility as a teacher when students are not motivated to do something. I, you can't complain that other people aren't happy about doing something when you're teaching uh, in like a bad, like in a bad way or something like that. And again, I'm not, I'm not trying to come down on teachers because I'm responsible for this as well. Uh, and sometimes you are forced to teach with a textbook something um, but usually, like, I, and, I, and I had to deal with this too as a, you know, I don't, I don't work in a school now, I work for myself, um, but for teaching people in a classroom, use the textbook as a way of getting to the grammar, but you don't have to actually teach using the textbook itself. So break down whatever the grammar is, make it incredibly simple. You, sometimes you have to go back three steps before you can make any progress. So again, just like the uh, the teaching example from, you know, my name is Tom, what's your name? That's actually pretty complicated. And when you just begin learning that, that's why I said like so many people have problems learning the language. Uh, it's because they're starting right off the bat without knowing anything about the language and just assuming like, well, the teacher said this is easy. I guess I'm the idiot if I don't know how to say this. So that's where motivation comes from. Like older learners... Um, you know, adults, maybe somebody my age or like 50 or 80 years old, they, they don't really need to be told to learn something. They have their kind of intrinsic motivation. Uh, but my, uh, for my like really young kids, it's really my fault if they do a good job or they don't do a good job. So you can't really blame a student for not wanting to learn something. I mean, think about like, especially I walk up to kids out here in Japan and like they know like 600 different Pokemon characters. And it's it's not that they're they're like bad learners or they're stupid or anything like that. It's just that they're actually interested in something and they and they're able to retain it. So when people say like, well, my child is not a good learner, they don't remember stuff very well. It's like I imagine there's probably some really good things that they do remember. It's just the stuff that they're interested in. And if you're a good teacher, you really take the time to uh, to make something so simple that they can't possibly mess it up. And that's really what people should be looking for as far as motivation goes. Um, yeah, to, concerning more. Yep, yeah, sure. I just, I just a really important point you're making about it being easy, uh, making it easy for them. And I want to, I think it's important to point out because some people are, are commenting, and I get it, that if it's too easy, they'll be bored. So I, I, I want to tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, but, let, let, if let it's too easy, what? Well, well, I think it has to do with the word easy. Uh, so I think what you mean, tell me if I'm wrong, from what I know about your videos, and please check out his videos, it's really great stuff. He takes stuff like really high level slang, I mean high level stuff, and makes it easy. And it's easy and interesting. So if you're thinking about advanced learners, as far as uh, English Anyone materials are concerned, there's a lot of stuff for advanced learners. I, I think easy, what Drew means, is not easy and boring, but easy to build confidence and enjoy it. The same way when I say, for example, relax, repeat, remember, I don't mean relax means you have to be, you know, falling asleep or lying down. You're just entertained. So is that right, Drew? The easy meaning, you know, engaged in it because it's... I think it's it should... Yeah, I, I, I think you, you got it right, Jason. I think basically it's... It's just simple and making sure that you don't take step two until people understand step one. And it doesn't really matter how you do that. You can call it easy, simple, basic, whatever you want to. But basically, it should be understandable. And you don't, you don't jump five steps before people understand what's happening because that's where people don't understand and get frustrated and then say they don't like learning languages or, or they're not learning languages. The last thing I'll mention about that point, uh, about materials for... Uh, for more difficult things or for people that really want to learn conversational English, uh, the real the real meat on EnglishAnyone.com is in Master English Conversation. Uh, and that's a program that I developed. I've been working on that and really honing it over the past uh, year and a half. And it's something that I don't have a, a new teacher's guide because I've just updated the program, but I'll be making that soon. Uh, but we have teachers in the program that use the lessons from that in their classes. Uh, and we also have just basic students that are all over the world that are learning using these same basic principles, but lots more kind of difficult grammar uh, and difficult words and phrases and idioms and things like that. And basically the whole idea of the technique for Master English Conversation version 2.0 is that you 
uh, I kind of begin with an actual conversation between two or more native speakers and we're not speaking slowly it's not like actors on a textbook CD or something like that we're sitting here having a conversation just like anybody would be and then I take that conversation and then I break it down into pieces so I go over the vocabulary I go over the grammar uh, I go over any phrases and kind of the the fluency secrets, the kind of things that get you into the club of being a native speaker, all of the things that you need to know about the culture, that kind of thing. And I teach those things first. And then I come back after you've already had a foundation of all those things, then you go on to watch the conversation and it's like, wow, I actually understand conversational English. And this is the program that I wish I had when I was beginning to learn Japanese because no, I never saw anything like that before because you kind of had things in textbooks and then you had the actual um, kind of street Japanese that people were using and there was no bridge between the two. So that's basically what the program is and it's designed for people that want to study by themselves. We have learners all over the world in the program uh, and it's also for teachers so that you can use the program in class, you can introduce you know specific types of grammar and then review them and then at the end of all that uh, you have a special audio lesson that gives you a conversation opportunity with me. You get to talk with me in an audio lesson and practice and review what you've learned. And then at the uh, the last part of the video lesson is your ability to go out with the special mission homework assignment and that's the kind of fluency mission that we talked about before. So sometimes it's going online and you know learning cooking classes or something like that. Sometimes it's going out and talking to native speakers. Uh, and we've got exercises for people in the program that are both living in native English speaking countries and not in native English speaking countries as well. So if you've got the internet, you've got the ability to improve. And it's the same thing with me. Like I, I learned a lot of Japanese, um, you know, out here in Japan, but I also taught a little bit uh, when I went back for a little while a few years ago. So it really doesn't matter where you live. It has more to do with your motivation as a learner um, than, you know, anything else as, as far as that's concerned. So. It's great. Also, uh, I, see, I see you just you up the time here. I've got plenty of time, so if people want to keep the party going, that's that's fine with me. I, I wanted to cut cut you off for a sec, um, just to say. Uh, so sorry about that, but we are added ten minutes. We've been adding, you know, sometimes twenty, thirty, but we can do ten, <laughs> uh, especially because we've got some great uh, stuff happening in Charles's Facebook group. Uh, so I'm sure with yours too, and on the class page, uh, I, I want to uh, focus. Uh, next on what is happening in the chat box because it's really important and uh, not just for Drew to comment on but for all of us to discuss about textbooks and curriculum so you know it's very important to me um, be, oh, to to create materials that students can use for self-study that you can have them do uh, in the flipped classroom you know at home if they have access to the internet or you give them you know, my files. But what's really important is that I make videos and Drew does the same thing. And you'll see if you look at his videos that teachers can use that connect directly to your curriculum. I mean directly. So if you say either number one, I have to use my textbook, fine. If you say number two, somebody said, well, uh, the students pay for the textbook. So they think, well, why aren't we using it? That's also fine. Uh, Number three, um, can you make activities from the textbook more engaging and exciting? Of course you can. In fact, so exciting activities from the textbook in terms of a video from me or Drew or someone else, this doesn't mean like a big party uh, to, to learn gerunds and infinitives or, or you know, the present progressive necessarily. It's just, you know, a breath of fresh air from the textbook, but not on a different subject. So it's nice to use videos of mine and Drew's if you don't have something in your textbook. But uh, back to what I was saying at first, and Drew, tell us what you think. For me, the most important thing is that the materials I use, teachers can use right away because it is something that's in their textbook. You know, it is uh, this vocabulary area or it is this grammar area. Um, but you just want to make it more interesting for the students. Back to that issue of how do we get students who have to follow a certain curriculum and you as a teacher who have to follow that, um, how can you bring it to life? And most of the grammar focused syllabus that is in a lot of these books and curriculum 
it's not bad stuff that's in there. It's just the wrong focus on it and not enough audio, uh, visual, too much, you know, analysis. So, Drew, what do you think about that? Are your materials good? Yeah, I agree. With, with a textbook, they don't have to throw away the textbook, right? Yeah, I mean, again, it's my, my problem is not with the textbook. It's just more... It's more kind of the, the focus on putting information between the knowledge that students want and, and the lesson itself. And, and again, that goes more to the explanations that textbooks provide and the way that they usually teach by having things in lists that just aren't designed for the way the human brain works. Um, and again, that's why you use songs and other things like that to connect. So it's not... It's not. It's never information. It's always how information is conveyed. And so, yeah. if you can use a video um, or a song or anything else like that, but I mean, honestly, ideally, the best thing a teacher can do is actually have their students speak. And it just depends on what the focus of the lesson is. I mean, some people are just being honest and they want to just prepare some students for a test. And if that's really what they want to do, so they can get a job doing something, yeah, I've got no problem with that. But, you know, all of the students that are on my program, you know, they want to speak actual conversational English. And it's not like I'm teaching people like all this ridiculous street language. It's just the actual everyday conversation that like I'm using right now. Uh, and right now I'm being kind of careful not to use so many idioms or any other, anything else like that. Um, but if you watch that, we have some master English conversation videos that people can watch and you can actually see how just a regular conversation happens. You know, we're using stories and talking about things and that's how you remember but yeah. I think a lot of students you know they also I mean you can sit and watch a video and zone out as well like a video magically makes everything better it's it's really the you know the activity it's kind of the same thing when I, I would have students um, I was teaching really really young kids like, like one and two years old and their parents would ask me what videos are good for their students to watch at home and I would say well, you know, whatever you watch, make sure you watch it with them. You shouldn't just sit your child in front of a TV and then go wash the dishes or whatever. Like, it has to be an active process because there isn't really much evidence that just sitting a child there and watching something is going to help them learn. So it's a, it's a way of pulling people into the language. It's a way of, you know, getting people excited about things, but you don't have to, you know, it, it doesn't have to be just, you know, one specific yep. thing like that. Great. Uh, I have a couple other questions here. Let me just type this last thing you said because I love the idea of pulling them into the language. Um, and that can be, you know, Drew style, my style, your yeah, style. Yeah, however you can get them style. in there. Yeah, get, get, just get, get, get them in there. <laughs> get them in. A uh, couple, we've had some sort of deep, long questions. How about a couple quick ones? I got one. Uh, were you good at math or maths, as they say in British English? Uh, maths. Uh, I'm, I'm good at... Um, Let's see. I think no, not really. <laughs> and if you watch, if you watch some of the uh, watch some of the videos, especially like the new Master English Conversation lesson ones, there's a, there's a few of those that are really funny. We're sitting and trying to do basic counting in math, uh, and it's just really not happening. I like ratios a lot. That's probably my favorite kind of math, and I like geometry because it's visual. But other than that, like trying to do. Uh, like trig and cal calculus, I, I failed that in college. <laughs> so, all right, because you have you have the philosophy side. So I thought maybe the logic and and the proofs and stuff, but uh, um, no logic. I, like uh, so, I mean, if you want to call that math, like symbolic logic is basically what I was teaching in this lesson here. And I recommend anybody that's interested in language learning check out symbolic logic. Uh, and it's basically and, and it's a visual thing as well that you can do with students. <laughs> Um, and if you if you learn about symbolic logic, it's it's using you know pictures and things like that to teach students that are you know it's just a basic way of explaining logic. So I, I recommend that as well. I did good at that and did well at that. You could see from that video, you know, the nice visuals. This is what's so amazing about. I mean, it's really a combination. Drew's stuff. Uh, it's the visuals. It's his relaxing delivery. And one thing that you're not seeing as much tonight. Uh, or this morning, wherever you are, but you'll see in the videos, is the humor. I mean, that's how I got connected. I'm not saying, <laughs> I'm not saying you're not being funny enough or something, but uh, the videos, I mean, sure, sure. there's some really good stuff. I mean, we're talking, you know, Drew wearing a wig and uh, playing with, <laughs> with monkeys and things. I mean, not that, it's really, really good stuff. And I got to say, if you're going to check out the slang videos, 
Uh, you'll love them. As teachers, uh, if you're not a native speaker of English, you will learn so much from uh, Drew's slang videos. They're really high level. You can also maybe share them with your advanced students, but especially good for a lot of you out there uh, who really like. And, and the first one, the alphabet, because he does it by the alphabet, slang from A to Z. And all these are free. They're all YouTube videos up there for everyone. But uh, the first one, Drew, I mean, the way you talk about, I'm not, I don't want to spoil it, um, but, uh, but the way you talk about uh, uh, the letter, uh, how you should not use slang with the police or, or the family, and then the first word you have, <laughs> the first word for slang, uh, really, it's just, I, I, I break up every time. It's so funny. Uh, all you have to do for the link, just go to www.youtube.com slash English anyone. Is that right, Drew? Is that yes, that's program? correct. And then you'll see different playlists and look for slang from A to Z. And we'll put a lot of stuff uh, up for you, Drew. I'm going to put up the post-class assignments. I'm going to say, where is it? It doesn't come up till after. Uh, Sylvia, could you hit us with the link for Facebook one more time? Uh, but I'm going to put that in an announcement to send out. Um, there's Sylvia's quick on the trigger. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put that in an announcement so all 2,300 and whatever of us uh, will will get that link to Drew's uh, group, and I'll be in that group tonight and others and check it out tomorrow. And uh, Drew, uh, let's see. I one one final question. Um, people yep. were talking about immersion, uh, and you were talking. Uh, you know, it seems like you would be a proponent of you know. Being relaxed and engaged and, and motivated to just take in, uh, you know, language at different levels. What do you think about the practicality of immersion and maybe things with online? You're in Japan. It's very hard to be around English a lot for a Japanese student who's in Japan. Uh, do you have any comments about that? Sure. Most of our teachers here uh, are in countries where there's not a lot of English uh, outside the classroom. So, you know, online materials are important. But what, what do you think about immersion? Uh, I think as far as immersion goes, it's more, you know, just thinking about a specific thing that you're interested in, uh, like me with gardening, I, I had that as the bridge to the language, and so that kind of pulls you again, this is the kind of pulling yourself into the language it's with something you're interested in, uh, and you can find groups that, that do just about anything. I think as far as learning languages goes, English is the easiest one to learn online because there's so many people speaking it and the, the language of the internet, international politics and business is all in English. Uh, if I'm trying to learn Swahili and I live in America, it's probably going to be more difficult to find some kind of message board, but we're lucky that we have people. I mean, I was uh, just telling people, you know, if they want to learn something, uh, I, I have a tip actually in the series about how to get fluent in English faster about how to start meeting people immediately you can go out and meet 10 people today on Twitter and Facebook just by using search.twitter um, I forget how it I think it's search.twitter.com uh, and you can type in a word or phrase that you're interested in like gardening or something like that and as you um, start finding people you can get into conversations with them and begin having simple things like that so it begins with chat and then you can kind of work on building things, uh, build your confidence that way. And as you improve, you can start getting into Skype conversations when you make better friendships. Yep. I think the and problem most people have is they're, they're trying to ask native students, they're trying to ask... Just one, one last point about that. I think the, the problem a lot of natives, uh, a lot of learners have is they want to ask questions about the language itself as opposed to trying to enjoy speaking the language. So they want to know how does this grammar point work or something, and then they get frustrated because native English speakers just, they don't care about that. They don't know that information anyway. They, like, go, go ask somebody on the street of New Jersey what, like, what a gerund or a split infinitive I'm gonna, I'm is and you think they're going to be able to tell you no they're not going to know that information they're like not. and why should they they don't need to know that uh, so like just getting out and seconds. we only have 45 seconds so i just want to take the last uh, 30 seconds to to thank you uh drew so much um and uh what you were getting into now is something i talk about a lot so i'm excited we're going to keep talking and keep working together uh i'm happy if you like the program tonight we got some good uh some thumbs up we've got some hands clapping uh, we got some good nights. We got some thank yous. We're gonna have to sign off from here. Thanks to all of you, Drew. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed it. Oh, we may have lost him already.
Everyone, I will send out a link uh, to the Facebook group, and I will also send out uh, the post. I'm, I'm, I'm still here. Peace and respect. <laughs> Good night.